the COVID-19 crisis in India and what it means for the rest of the world. Could the explosion of cases derail U.S. efforts to end the pandemic? Workers evacuate a patient from a hospital outside Mumbai after a fire there killed 13 COVID-19 patients on April 23. An extreme surge in coronavirus infections has overwhelmed India's healthcare system. This video brought to you by Healthy RN Ways channel that talks about the COVID-19 pandemic, video posting every Monday and Thursday, to see my other videos see the link at the end card of this video. The second wave of COVID-19 in India continues to set world records as the number of new cases topped 400,000 on May 1, 2021. According to the World Health Organization, WHO, India now accounts for one in every three new cases of COVID-19. The crisis has hospitals around the country past capacity, shortages of medical workers and oxygen have left many sick people to die without ever receiving treatment. The sudden, extreme surge took the world by surprise, and now experts everywhere are trying to understand why this catastrophe happened, and what can be done to stop it. There's hope that the second wave has peaked and the number of cases and deaths will begin to drop, but that's far from certain, the first wave of COVID-19 in India was vastly underreported. We didn't predict this second wave at all, and it hit much more quickly and reached peaks that are way higher than anything seen in wave 1. The big concern is what is causing the second wave, and how much longer will it last. Experts fear cases and deaths are underreported the situation in India is just simply heartbreaking. The number of cases reported yesterday, April 29, was 380,000, and people on the ground tell us that, the real, number is probably some multiple of that, perhaps 5 to 10 times that number. The official death toll stands at around 3,000 people a day, again, it's probably more like 5 or 10 times that. Many people are dying before they even get to the hospital so they're not being counted as COVID-19 deaths. Hospitals are full and medical supplies are scarce, the medical system in several parts of India has been completely overwhelmed by the huge demand from sick patients. Hospitals are running out of beds and supplies, including oxygen, and medications are in short supply. Also dire is the shortage of healthcare workers. That's because healthcare personnel are also contracting COVID-19. They're down at a time when the demand for healthcare is just so great. A feeling of complacency contributed to the surge, in spite of the challenges of socially distancing in the more populated areas of the country and the difficulty of getting any kind of public health message out to its 1.3 billion people, India did a better job controlling the virus in the early part of the pandemic than many other nations, including the United States. Very strict lockdowns probably played a key part in slowing the spread of COVID-19. These lockdowns had some negative effects. They were criticized for causing a lot of economic harm to the country and causing unintended consequences, including deaths of migrant workers, who had no way of getting back home because transportation was shut down. The lockdown success, coupled with the shrinking number of cases, led to an overall feeling of complacency and even invincibility. People thought, the worst is behind us, we survived virus, and even though there was still supposed to be masking and some degree of social distancing, that really fell by the wayside, no one was doing it. Superspreader events fueled the second wave, in early April, millions of people gathered in India to take a dip in the holiest of rivers, the Ganges, as part of the religious festival Kumbh Mela. This was a massive superspreader event. Simultaneously, in multiple other parts of the country, massive political rallies drew extremely large crowds. This also contributed to the spread of the virus. Many of the incumbents running for re-election wanted to downplay the virus, leading to a major media clampdown on any negative reporting. As these outbreaks were starting the media was actively being told, this is not important, don't report on it. Shortages of supplies and India's huge population pose vaccination hurdles. All things considered, India has actually done a very good job with vaccinations. According to tracking data, the United States began vaccinating in mid-December and has administered 246 million doses of vaccine so far. India began vaccinating about two months ago and they've given 120 million doses of vaccine, a faster pace than the United States. The challenge is India's large population. 
At this point in the pandemic, over 44% of people in the United States have received at least one dose of vaccine, whereas in India less than 10% of the population has been vaccinated. Part of the issue with India's inoculation program is that, over the last few weeks, there have been issues with sourcing the raw materials needed to manufacture the vaccine, though the White House recently announced they would release these supplies. Variant first found in India could be more transmissible. Scientists are still trying to understand how variants, coronavirus mutations, have contributed to the second wave in India. There's at least one variant in India that is different from anywhere in the world and it appears that this variant is more infectious and passes more easily from one person to another. This variant is known as B1.617 and is already in 19 different countries, including Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. The more COVID-19 cases in a country, the more likely it is that new variants will emerge. Every time the virus enters a person, that's when it multiplies and is susceptible to mutation. This B1.617 variant may sicken people differently than other variants do. We traditionally think of COVID-19 as presenting with cough and fever and typically happening in older people or people with underlying health conditions. With this virus we are starting to hear that there are more young people getting infected. India's COVID-19 surge could imperil the world. The United States is vulnerable. Vaccination is definitely going to slow down any surges if variants are imported into the United States, but it's only a matter of time before the US population is affected by this. Because of the way the virus is transmitted, no one is safe until everyone is safe, unless the United States is prepared to lock itself down and pull up the drawbridge and not allow any travel from or to the United States. Because of economic pressures, any type of lockdown or travel ban is unlikely or would be short-lived. We're going to have to be faced with what's going on in the rest of the world. The US vaccination strategy requires a global vision, it's critical for more Americans to be vaccinated, Americans aren't going to be safe until everybody in the world is vaccinated. If we want to protect ourselves, a good solution is to protect the rest of the world. No one in the United States predicted the magnitude of the second wave in India, but now that it's here, we need to learn from it and update our strategy accordingly. We need to plan for a possible third wave with new variants. That plan should include developing a vaccine production infrastructure that serves the globe. That means a vaccine supply chain and production facilities that are decentralized so they're working throughout the world. There also needs to be increased surveillance of the virus around the world, just as we do with the flu. We need to know what variants are circulating and reformulate the vaccine or give booster shots every year or every other year, whatever is required that will make us safer. India's COVID-19 surge could jeopardize world supplies of vaccines and medication India is called the pharmacy of the world because a huge portion of pharmaceuticals are manufactured there. Many pharmaceutical companies have plants in India that manufacture life-saving drugs. If India doesn't have capacity to continue that production, the medical supply for the entire world would be at risk. India is also a major manufacturer of all different kinds of vaccines and produces 60% of the world's supply, including the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Additional US government support to India is critical, health experts say contributing to reputable charities that are giving aid to India is appreciated and a big help, but it's simply not enough. It's really government that needs to step up. The American public needs to lobby their elected officials and make sure that the United States government passes legislation to get aid to India. Many of the needs right now are only things that the government can provide. Actual doses of the COVID-19 vaccine are needed right away. The release of the supplies to make vaccines is helpful, but producing those vaccines takes four to six weeks, which is too late. People also need to let their representatives know that vaccinating the world is a top priority. Widespread vaccination lowers the odds of dangerous new variants, leading to a future in which the virus poses a more manageable risk. This is all about today's video, please like share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching, see you on my next video. Masalama.